Snowmen, snow angels, snowball fights, sledding, and whitewashing your friends. There's so much fun stuff to do in the snow. So how do these fluffy magic flakes form, and why is it snow and not just little balls of ice? The formation of snowflakes is surprisingly weird. It depends a lot on the humidity and air temperature, but there are a lot of factors involved. One of the most common statements in history is no two snowflakes are exactly alike. So is it true? In short, I'll say probably not, but as Leonardo DiCaprio might say, we need to go deeper. Let's start off at the very beginning of snowflake production. Usually some sort of dust or particles floating in the air form little droplets of water around it and it freezes. For the most part, the bond angles of the atoms and the water molecules cause the beautiful hexagonal shaped snowflake that everyone is used to seeing. Molecules of water vapor turn directly into ice when adding to the snowflake's arms. As the crystal gets heavy enough, it starts to fall and usually collides with other flakes forming aggregates as it arrives to the ground. So we know how they form, shouldn't they all form the same way? Well, they all start in a very similar way, meaning an extremely tiny ice crystal made of just a few atoms could be exactly like another crystal. But this isn't what we're talking about when we say a snowflake. We mean the kind of snowflake that you can see falling thousands of feet and landing directly on your tongue. All that being said, the snowflakes add water molecules quite randomly on the arms of the snowflake. The formation of different shapes and sizes depend on a ton of factors. Even a few degrees or tiny changes in humidities can have drastic effects on the snowflake. Also, there are many microenvironments that a snowflake has to float through as it falls towards the ground. The microenvironments cause the flake to melt, refreeze, add more molecules, collide together, and change as it falls. The imperfection caused by all these changes make the snowflakes scatter light, which is why snowflakes are white. The next part of this video will be a lot of guesstimation math, but hopefully you can follow through with us and have some fun with it. These estimates do favor snowflakes being non-unique, though. The number of snow crystals that fall to Earth each year is about 10 to the 24th. That's a 1 with 24 zeros after it. Multiply that by 10 billion years, and multiply that by the estimated number of stars in the universe. With a pretty high estimate of one planet with snow on it per star, we get that the estimated number of crystals that have fallen on all of the planets in the entire universe since the beginning of time is about 10 to the 63rd. To put that into perspective, the number of atoms in the entire universe is only about 10 to the 79th. Well, that's a big number. Surely that would mean there are trillions of snowflakes exactly alike. Surprisingly, no. There are approximately 10 to the 19th atoms in each snowflake. The chance of getting a heavy hydrogen atom to be part of a water molecule is about 1 in 6,500. You also don't know where or exactly how many deuterium atoms there will be. Because of this, the best way to understand the number of unique snowflakes is with a factorial. For example, if you have 15 books and you get to order them in any which way you want, you multiply 15 times 14 times 13 and so on. There are over a trillion possibilities. If you have 100 books, the number is 10 to the 158th. For snowflakes, we have 10 to the 19th atoms that can be arranged in any which way. That's on top of the number of deuterium atoms being almost any number, on top of the snowflakes being made up of almost any amount of atoms, on top of the atoms adding to the snowflake in different structures. The closest number to all of this math is infinity. It is impossible to grasp the immenseness of this number. The number would not be 10 to the millionth, or 10 to the trillionth, or 10 to the googleplex. It would be closest to infinity. When someone says you're one in a million, there are 7,000 people just like you. If you're one in a billion, there's still seven people like you. Next time, tell them you're one in a snowflake. And as always, thanks for watching and have a super duper delicious day.